Alléluia. Amen. Ok. The gentle dispensation ends with the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is in three stages as we saw in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. It starts with one. The Lord himself will descend first with a shout. The second stage is the voice of the archangel. And the last stage is the trump of God. Then the dead in Christ will rise first. That is the process. The way we are alive will be changed in a moment. And the shout there is the message. Calling us back to Bible Christianity. Out of the denominational errors. Come out of the Antichrist system. Hallelujah. That is what Jesus Christ described in Matthew 25 verse 6 as the midnight cry. Hallelujah. And that is the ministry of restoration in Malachi chapter 4 verses 5 to 6. John the Baptist fulfilled the first part and like Jesus Christ told us in Matthew chapter 11 and also William Abraham fulfilled the second part turning the heart of the children to the heart of the fathers praise the Lord hallelujah that shout also is supposed to reveal who the antichrist is because we are supposed to know who the antichrist is before we go the reason God makes sure we know who the Antichrist is so that we will come out of her system and get ourselves ready. And he revealed it to us through the revelation of the seven seals in the book of Revelation chapter 6. Chapter 5 and chapter 6. And when that revelation was to bring forth another monumental thing happened on earth. Jesus Christ himself visited the earth and allowed science to see him. Seven angels came to meet William Abraham to tell him it is time for the revelation of the seals. And when they were going back, they formed that cloud. The cloud and that magazine took that picture. And when the picture was brought, it was turned like that we discover it was the face of Jesus Christ. Live. That is what was seen. That's how it was taken. That was the vindication of the, that revelation of those seven seals. Remember, it was John that saw the opening of the seals. Amen. But all that he gave, they were symbols. What they meant, God sealed them. Nobody knew what they meant until this age. William Abraham then came to tell us what each of those symbols meant. Who the first horse rider was, the second horse rider, the third horse rider, the fourth horse rider, those four horse riders that rode through the seven church ages. And he let us know that it is the same rider changing color. It was the Antichrist. And he was the one, therefore, that told us, just like the Bible tells us, when the enemy comes like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will do what? Will raise a standard. So, I told you one time, with this God that we serve, before there is ever a problem, he has provided a solution. I, I hope you are aware of it. Don't you ever think that there is any problem without a solution. And don't think that God is creating the solution because of your prayer. No, 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 no. The solution has already been there. And so, when Jesus Christ told the disciples, upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Those gates of hell are those four horse riders, the Antichrist move that Satan will release through the seven church ages to try to quench the lights. But he, God, reserved the standards. They are the four beasts in verse 7 of Revelation chapter 4. What is the first beast there? It was a lion. 
to counter the first beast that sat down on a horse, a white horse. The second beast was what? Eh? Was a calf, an ox. To counter the red horse rider because that white changed to red later. What's the third one? The face of a man. To counter the black horse. The fourth one was what? The flying eagle. To counter what? <laughs> Hallelujah. The pale horse rider, which is the fourth horse. Amen. We have taken it, but we will still take it again, those seals, so that you understand the full impact of that. Praise the Lord. Nothing takes God by accident. He knows tomorrow before today began. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so, through that revelation, we are able. You remember that when the first seal was open, you will hear the angel. Uh, he said, he said, when the first seal was open, he said, the first beast said, Come and see. Uh -huh. So, all those beasts, they were talking about the standard, they were depicting the kind of anointing that God was going to release in his church to counter those four horse riders. We'll take them in detail as time goes on. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And so that voice is the shout. That shout. Amen. Let us know who the Antichrist is. What the seven church ages are. Getting us ready for the next stage. If you don't hear the shout, the shout it says, come out of her, my people. And don't be partakers of our sins. Come out of the denominational system. Come out. It's an antichrist system. It's an antichrist system. Especially in this age that we are in. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. That is speaking to this age. The Laodicean church age. William Brown was trying to make us understand that it is in this Laodicean church age that we see by the time we get to that Revelation chapter 3. He said, that is where Christ was put out of the church. He's out. Totally. It's only in this age that was achieved. And so man and the Antichrist system designed it. They put him outside and they have their own systems. To produce ministers is no more Christ. That will produce the ministers, they send them to Bible school, Bible colleges. You see? Now men began to answer the title that belonged to the Holy Ghost and Him alone. A man will say he's a reverend. When the Bible says the name of God is reverend. And every one of us, pastors, we are overseers of our local churches. God himself appoints us. He appoints me here in Ijesha. You can appoint another person anywhere you are pastoring, you are the overseer of that locality, not organization. Then, the place was there, one by one we are local overseers, local overseers, then the Holy Ghost is the general overseer. But now, they have taken his title. So what is the title of the Holy Ghost now? If a man is the general overseer, G.O. And some begin to take on scriptural titles. Titles that you can't find scriptural base for them. Superintendent. Prilate. His eminence. His preeminence. You know? And all those titles they take. They put him out until he's outside now. Knocking. This time now, he didn't say if any church, he stopped dealing with the church, he began to deal with the individual. If any man open, and you will wonder what type of door is there, Can't, doesn't God have the power to open and enter? No, this door, the 
that we're talking about, the knob, the handle to open it is from inside. It cannot be open from outside. It can only be open from inside. So he's standing and waiting for you. And may it be open these 21 days in the name of Jesus. In this age you now, salvation is an individual thing. It's an individual thing. Some of you that are attached to churches, I will die in this church. And this church, I will die. This I will die. You are missing it. Amen. Let's contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Praise the Lord. Then we go to the trump of God. The trump of God. Amen. Sorry, the voice first. Hallelujah. The first one is what? The shout. Then we have the voice. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 16. The first one is the voice. I mean the shout. Then the voice of the archangel. Listen. I thought I was able to finish this. Unfortunately, <laughs> I can't finish it now. We'll complete it next time. But let me end on this explanation. Amen. Because we still have some things. We are, we are taking it up to the time we will finally enter eternity. After the 1,000 years reign. And we want to do it step by step. We have to see it. Remember it's being recorded. And somebody will need it. Some people will meet it. Amen. They will need it. The voice of the archangel. Which archangel? The archangel is the angel in Revelation chapter 10. Revelation chapter 10 from verse 1. That angel that stands up. Amen. One foot on the sea, one foot on the earth. With a book in his hand that he raises up. And swears by him that liveth forever that there should be time no longer. And when he had cried, Amen, as a lion roareth. I am quoting Revelation chapter 10 from verse 1. The Bible says, Seven thunders uttered their voices. And when John was about to write, the angel told him, Stop, don't write it. Amen. So what the seven thunders wrote after the voice of that archangel that produced those seven thunders is the next thing the bride of Jesus Christ is waiting for. What it is, we don't know. But the devil has gone forth to say it is already revealed. And enter message, followers of William Braham's ministry they have been polarized. Some say it is revealed. Some say it is not revealed. I am on the side of those who say it is not revealed. You who say it is revealed, you lie. According to the scripture. Praise the Lord. You say it is revealed. Okay, what is the revelation? They have nothing to say. They say William Brown has revealed all the mystery. Therefore, how can you say? William Brown has not revealed all the mystery. Not all. How can you say all? He's dead and gone. And the church is marching on. There are other things that will be fulfilled. The next stage is the revelation of the seven thunders that gives us the rapturing faith. That is what we are waiting for. Praise the Lord. I remember why this is so important. Is He stands up he stands up from where? It is that standing up that Jesus Christ made reference to in Luke chapter 13. Let's read it. Luke chapter 13. Verse 23. Then said one unto him, Luke 13, 23. Then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? And he said unto them, he says, strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, we, end, we seek to enter in and shall not be able. When once 
the master of the house is risen up. Take note, risen up. And has shut to the door. And you begin to stand without, outside, and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us, and he shall answer and say unto you, I know you not whence ye are. When the master was risen up, raised up there, it means he was sitting down somewhere before. Where was he sitting down? The mercy seat for the past 2,000 years. Waiting for the last bride member to come in. He's sitting down there interceding for you and for me in his office as a high priest. He is the one, that mighty angel that stands up. Standing up because salvation is over. And it is after he has stood up that he gave that shout that produced the seven thunders. That means by the time the seven thunder will be sounding, salvation is over. So why are you saying the thunders have sounded? When people are still getting saved. Praise the Lord. That's why it's good to know your Bible. If not, this antichrist spirit will confuse you. That is the next stage we are in. And when the seven thunders will sound, I'm telling you, it will not be everybody. If you don't hear the shout, you cannot hear the voice of the archangel. You can never hear because the first stage has started. The rapture has started. That's why we always say it starts with a shout. And it's Jesus Christ himself that descends with that shout. And he came in this age by the pillar of fire. And I keep telling you why the pillar of fire is a symbol of our faith. Because in the wilderness, it was a pillar of fire. Cloud in the day and fire in the night. To show the way. It's to show the way. That is the same pillar of fire that met with Apostle Paul on the way of Damascus. To Damascus. The same pillar of fire came again in this age to tell us this is the way. Oh, glory be to God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. That's why in most intermediate churches, in our homes, in our offices, you will see that picture of William Braham with the halo on the light, the light on his head hanging. It is not William Braham picture we are hanging. It is that light. It is that light. That's above there. That. that is that light. It's not the man. And that light is still here now. Because William Brown said, anywhere this truth will be preached, he said, that same pillar of fire will come down. And he's here now. And when he comes here, he does something to know, let people know he's around. When he comes, there will be healing. There will be, there will be deliverance. There, hallelujah. When he comes, frustrations will disappear. When he comes, there will be restoration. There will be miracles. How many people are ready for it today? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So we will continue next time. Our time is up.